Hello, everyone. Welcome, welcome. I'm just allowing folks to trickle in and we'll get started in just a second. Yes, Corinne knows the drill. <laughs> drop in the chat, you know, where you're based. Feel free to drop also links to your work as well. Um, this will be such a great hour. I'm so excited. Just allowing folks to trickle in. So today we have uh, one, I'm really just glad about this conversation because I feel like a lot of things is so hard to know unless you're a part of that world. And so for me, it's all about going straight to the source. <laughs> so I'm so excited to have the director of photography of People Magazine here, Ilana. Thank you so much for joining Hi. us. Um, we are just really going to have a great hour of just, you know, informal conversation and q and I know some photographers have already started dropping questions in our Slack group. Um, feel free to drop any questions in this chat as well, and we'll try to get Sorry, to Sorry, I have to embarrassingly <laughs> lean forward to read the chat, so. <laughs> no worries. <laughs> So, you know, I guess just to kick things off, tell me about your, you know, your background, your road to just like becoming a director of photography. Where did it start for you? So um, I've been at People for, I think, around 12 years now, which is a long time. And prior to that, I was at InStyle. Prior to that, I was at uh, Woman's Day, Real Simple, This Old House Magazine, Us Weekly for like a hot hot second. But um, I originally, I went to NYU and I didn't know what I wanted to do. I just knew I loved magazines. So I went into journalism and found out that writing is really boring and a lot of work. <laughs> and I'm not that good at it. So I was just doing all these internships and I was very, very lucky to be at NYU and have that opportunity to do internships during the school year where I you know, work regular making money jobs in the summer. And I um, interned at Us Magazine before it was weekly. It was beautiful. Mark Seliger shot for it. Mary Ellen Matthews shot for it all the time. It was almost like Premier Magazine. And looking at all everyone's jobs, looking at the art director's job, looking at the photo editor's job, because I had no idea how a magazine got made. Like if you ask my parents, they still don't know. And found out that, oh, photos, the fun part, that's where I want to be. At that point, it was too late to change my major with the scholarship and the whole to-do, but um, I got an art history minor and kept the journalism major and just kept on with the internships. And then after college, an internship at Women's Day turned into a staff job at Women's Day, and then it just all kind of went from there. You know, I got laid off a bunch of times along the way because that's how it works in print media. They just say one day, your magazine doesn't exist, or your job doesn't exist, but that's okay. You pack it up and move on. <laughs> no harm, no foul. <laughs> That's fair. I, 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 trust me, I've seen and I have a lot of friends in journalism, print and otherwise, and yes, and even public radio and that's the way the industry. <laughs> that's really honestly have to how it is. It. It's like, it, 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 that's how it is. So the fact that I, when I keep thinking of how long I've been at people, I'm yeah. always surprised that it's been since 2010 mm -hmm. and that, I'm still here every day, but I still have that mindset where it's like, put all the numbers in your personal phone so you can just walk away with <laughs> your hard drive ready. Um, but it's fun to see how the industry has changed. And I also cover people.com. I'm the head of the website as well from a photo perspective. And we're really expanding that. I, it's hard to say expanding because we publish over around a thousand photos a day on the website, but we're expanding it in terms of commissioned photography. That's something that we haven't really done on the website and we're starting to do like now, like literally I had a meeting about it today. Wow. And just doing digital first stories, digital only stories. And, you know, that's where the market is. And I'm, interested to learn how, and this is all new to me as well, because currently we use 
red carpet photos or provided mm -hmm. photos, but how you experience the website is different. So how we need to photograph something is different. Mm -hmm. Like we, I'm sure I'm getting off topic already for you. So stop me at any time because no, I like no, to talk about it. Currently, if we're doing a story and it's about a family that has an illness, like we do a lot of those types of stories, you would, we would say, oh, we want to do a beautiful opener that's going to run double page spread and the family will be playing and the ones that are the main portions of the family will need to be foreground and the other kids can be mm -hmm. playing in the background or whatever, but we need to leave some space up top to have the beautiful headline and the type. Well, the way our website looks, the photos run smaller, not that big. And there is no type on them. So if we compose the photo in the same way for digital, it will look very weird online. Their heads will be really tiny mm -hmm. and there'll be all sorts of weird dead space. So it's really just about reconceiving what we do at People for all the different platforms and making sure that we're getting everything we need so that the story will excel in print and that the story will excel on digital and that it works within any platform that can arise. New platforms mm -hmm. come up daily, I'm sure, that I don't even know about. That's so fascinating. I, I guess like, you know, since you've been there for so long and now you're seeing this evolution of like going from print to also digital focus, um, how has your just like day-to-day -day then changed as the director of photography? I mean, because you're running both online and also in print, you know, it's, I can't micromanage. I have to, you know, pick and choose what I'm going to micromanage. And I'm super annoying in that I have a very long commute and I kind of troll my own website <laughs> on my commute. And I like send annoying screenshots to people. I'm like, I don't like this crop. Why'd you pick this photo? <laughs> Let's swap <laughs> it out. And they're like, I posted that four hours ago. I'm like, I'm just seeing it now. Change it. <laughs> Where for print, once it's done, it's done. So you kind of need to get your opinion in on the front end. <laughs> you right. You can't unpublish something. Of course, also the internet lives forever. So you just kind of have to pick and choose. And I have a huge team. I have a great team, but I'm probably around 17 photo editors across print and digital. And some are producers, some produce shoots, some just do research and existing art, and some do both. And I have people, I have people in LA, I have for digital, it works like a newsroom. So there's very, we have not quite 24 seven coverage, but relatively close. So I have people in the UK, I have someone in Singapore, just because of the time differences. That is incredible. <laughs> so it's a big machine. It's definitely a machine, but we're excited to always be, you know, working with new photographers and also keeping established relationships that we have. It's a balance. Right, right. Um, I think the, you know, before we even dive into like, you know, just the world of photographers and how that works and, you, you know, how you decide to hire photographers, all of that, um, you know, walk us me through just like the actual trajectory, like the different maybe titles you've had over the years and how does one, you know, become a director of photography and what does that really mean in the magazine sense? So um, I started as like a photo and art assistant, which meant I did like the billing and back in the day, now I'm going to sound old, you know, we, were, we didn't have digital, <laughs> you had to like count every slide that came in and label it. <laughs> and log it in a system to make sure that like we received 250 slides from this photographer where we're turning 250 oh slides my goodness. <laughs> and you would always be missing one and that one would always be from the table of contents page and it would always be stuck at pre-production because it used to get sent out to get scanned at pre-production back in the day so it was like a lot of stickers and counting and spreadsheets <laughs> Because each of those slides they said was like $2,500 because that's what the photographer said it was worth if it was lost in the contract. Um, <laughs> and you did not want to lose that. Exactly. <laughs> not that they take it out of my paycheck, but I still did not want to lose that. Let's go. <laughs> and then from there, I started assisting on shoots 
you know, with my bosses. So it was a woman's day at the time. So we would do a lot of crafts and a lot of holiday stuff. I'd never celebrated Christmas before. So it was fun to do Christmas things. And like, it was in the summer, but still I set up a lot of fake trees (laughs) and (laughs) always in the background, like putting out some cookies for the shot, lots of cute puppies we would get. And, um, just kept moving up into then producing my own shoots and then producing bigger shoots. And then it was just kind of a general spur from there and, you know, managing a budget, just the general steps along the way, but started with billing and counting. I see. Okay. And so do you feel that, you know, I guess now would it look like the different the titles have changed so maybe if well, somebody... I think the titles are really unique everywhere and yeah. they're wonky and they don't really make sense mm-hmm. so I think it's always confusing I would say it just as an industry it's confusing but I think you know it depends on the title on the brand you're working for people is such a big brand mm-hmm. that as an entry-level person some ways you have more opportunity and some ways you have less. Like we work so fast because we're a weekly that I don't really have the time to maybe show someone the ropes that I would Mm -hmm. in a smaller brand or it's we don't have as many stories. Mm -hmm. So you get to do what I think you can handle by yourself, but getting to do bigger things is harder for me to like fold in and I Mm -hmm. want to do it. It's just harder to do or it takes longer. But the things you do do, you get to own as your own. Like, this is my story. I did this. As opposed to when I first started producing shoots, I just followed my boss around and did whatever she told me to do. Where Mm -hmm. that's probably if you're at a smaller brand and they do fewer shoots in a month, that would be what you do. You'd be on the bigger sets doing Mm -hmm. less as opposed to being on the smaller sets doing more. That makes a lot of sense. Um, I'm going to share my screen, um, because I, I mean, one, I'm just amazed that there's like over a thousand photos you said a day, (laughs) which is, yeah, I mean, it's a lot. It's, it, it's bumped up a lot recently. We were at like 700 a couple months ago, but we are on a roll, (laughs) but it was also award season, Met Gala, Oscars, like, right. There's a lot. Right. That's true. Um, so I just, I just clicked on the most recent like people story. Um, I've not read this story yet. I haven't read it either. (laughs) About Rebel Wilson. Um, But I just wanted you to quickly like walk us through, you know, when you're doing like these different exclusive stories or the original photos, like what goes into just like the planning of this, like how long maybe something like this may have took from idea to like, so execute. this is a good one you clicked on randomly. So bravo to you because I produced oh, the shoot. I do not produce all the shoots in any way. <laughs> um, and this is an A-list celebrity with an mm-hmm. A-list PR person. And really the person you have to answer to is the PR person. Okay. That person is making so many decisions. Not that we're not starting the conversation, mm-hmm. but we go to... The editors book the talent so that in pe- at people at least photo does not book the talent. So the editor says, we think it'd be great to do a cover with Rebel Wilson. She has a big movie coming out that I heard is funny on Netflix. I haven't watched it yet that she lost all this weight and this is a big journey for her and it's a turning point in her career. So it'd be great to sit down pegged to this movie. And the rep's like, yes, she has this movie to promote. This is why she will do this story. Then I get in touch with the rep after speaking with my creative director when we kind of brainstormed and we'd say, we'd love to do like it's a fashion magazine, like beauty, you know, that's how we conceive this. Like she's funny in some photos, but she's still looking beautiful. She's still looking fashion, which isn't what we do normally. We don't really do, we're starting to do it more, but these dressier outfits, we used to be much more casual and low key in terms of just the style. Um, but like it was a Cosmo cover, like it was a glamour cover, that kind of aesthetic. So you have to run that by the rep. And then with certain talent or certain reps, who's gonna shoot this? 
Sometimes we don't have a choice. Sometimes we have carte blanche. Sometimes they say, pitch me some names. <laughs> mm -hmm. That tends to be with the celebrity, the bigger celebrities, at least. Mm -hmm. It's either this is my team, take it or leave it, or we need to approve who you suggest. So it does make it, I would say, just across the board, like, harder sometimes to branch out in ways that we would like to, like, we think this person would be great for this shoot. Mm -hmm. And the rep is just like, no, because the rep wants, doesn't want the talent to be unhappy. And the rep is afraid if it's not someone that they know either personally or through the grapevine or whatever, mm -hmm. they don't want it to come back on them. <laughs> as having been a failure or even, sometimes it's not even the aesthetics of it it's the personality I see like, oh well that person shoots really slow this talent doesn't have patience for that or you know because everyone has a different personality and mm -hmm. what works for some people doesn't work for others and then will they clash with the the talent <laughs> they have I mean it has happened it's not unheard of in any way or it's worked the other way where I've started I've started long-term relationships like so and so never worked with this talent before I said I think it would be great the rep believe me and now the talent will only shoot with that person <laughs> that is so but, <laughs> or they hire them to do like editorial money is not good money. Like it's just not, mm -hmm. you know, that's the way of the world. But they did this editorial shoot with this person and then that talent got hired to do, this is like a years ago example. So I'm dating myself. Leighton Meester from Gossip Girl. <laughs> Back in the day, I had a photographer photograph her for a story in style and they hit it off like gangbusters. Then she got a Pantene campaign. Does Pantene even still exist? I don't know. And <laughs> insisted that he do the Pantene campaign. So he got a big money job because of the relationship off of the editorial job. That and that does seem to be, even in today's world, mm -hmm. relatively common. Like I had a photographer just recently who had never met, who we hired to photograph Amy Schneider, who's the woman who won Jeopardy for all those weeks and weeks and weeks. And they didn't know each other. And now they're working together all the time. Mm -hmm. And they're trying to do personal projects together. They really hit it off in terms of trans rights. And she's like, would you be interested in doing this story with us? Like mm -hmm. they started forming a relationship. Wow. That's a collaboration. I mean, that's amazing. And really, again, a good just like point that you just never know where these relationships could lead. Um, and I guess, you know, with this one, since you were able to, you know, produce it, how much time does a photographer typically have for oh, very little, very little, like I would say, maybe 90 minutes, including outfit changes. And that was probably a good amount. I did a cover shoot yesterday that we had 45 minutes, including outfit changes. So it's a lot of pressure. It's a lot. You have, I would say you most of the time have as much time as you need to set up. Mm -hmm. Like, but we've done shoots that are, we did a, I'm just name dropping left and right. This is awful and embarrassing. I'm just <laughs> with um, President Obama. And Shaniqua Jarvis shot it and she probably had 10 minutes maybe. Wow. And that was a cover for people and also a cover for InStyle, which we negotiated up front. And then an inside feature for people. No outfit changes for the president. Oh, that's not true. He put on that like bomber jacket that people say was cool. <laughs> but oh. yeah, it was maybe 10 minutes. And we thought going in, we know that he does not like doing photo shoots. So I had negotiated with his reps. I said, I'm going to put 30 minutes on the call sheet knowing I won't get it, but he'll see that. And at least he'll mentally think 30. So I'll get 10. Otherwise, if you put down 10, you'll get two. 
How smart, but that's so crazy. Wow. So, okay. With 45 minutes. But she set up for two hours. She set up for three hours. We had everything tested. We had, you know, right. it's important to have like the right assistants mm-hmm. who can really help you and also who can also be stand-ins because yesterday I was standing in. I am very short. Talent was very tall. So I was like, this is a great shot. And I'm posing and I was leaning against the edge of a table. Well, then she came in and her butt was nowhere near the edge of that table. It was like a foot above it. <laughs> mm-hmm. So that shot that we worked on was not helpful for her because she couldn't lean on the edge of the table. <laughs> it's just so interesting. Um, and so, you know, for this, I, I do see some follow-up questions in the chat. Um, one of them being like, okay, so you have like the 10 minutes or 45 minutes then what is like the process like after that? Does the photographer edit the photos? Do you have an in-house editing team? You mentioned, you know, different photo editors. What is the oh, time? It, it depends on the situation. Different photographers, if we're talking about like the A-list celebrity photographers, I kind of know what they're going to give me. Some photographers send me everything, like everything they shot. Other photographers send me 30 photos. It's not enough, by the way. I also don't like to see everything. (laughs) I kind of like to see, go through, pick your five star favorites and say, these are my five stars and these are my four stars and these are my three stars and give me that. Will I necessarily go with your five star? Not necessarily, but I'd like to know what it is. Like your opinion Mm -hmm. matters, but my, it's not my decision. It's a, I have a creative director. I have an editor in chief. I have an executive editor. So Mm -hmm. We also need to look at just because it's maybe the best photo doesn't mean that it's the photo that's right for the story. Like Mm -hmm. if we did, we did a shoot in November or December with Simone Biles for a cover and it was beautiful. Felicia Munn shot it. I love working with her. She's, Mm -hmm. she's amazing. She's so great. We started working with her, I can't remember, was it before the pandemic? Time's a blur. But we have started working with her on a smaller shoot and loved working with her. And now we work with her whenever we can. She's fantastic. But my favorite shot from the shoot did not make it into print because it wasn't right for the opener. And the one that was right for the opener, she was looking in this direction. So like, you can't have her looking in this direction over six pages. And the one that I love, she's looking in this direction. So then we needed something where she's facing forward for the turn. Mm -hmm. And it's just about how that pacing goes. So if you only see the favorite photos, they might not be right for over the six pages or whatever it is, Mm -hmm. or, oh, this photo is beautiful but she looks so serious and the headline is I'm happier than I've ever been. So Mm -hmm. that's not right for this. And we don't do the, know the headline. We know the gist of the story going in, but we don't know what the headline is because she hasn't done the interview yet to give the quote. So it's a little bit of a chicken and an egg situation where you kind of have a plan, Mm -hmm. but you need to capture it all. You need to capture a big smile, a smaller smile, a looking off. I'm introspective. I have a Mona Lisa strength. I, <laughs> and then we all the pieces kind of come together at the same time. Wow. No, this is like I'm learning so much because I just different things I never like thought of. And so sometimes you do, like you just say you may not have read the full story. The story interview may not have happened. So you're just right. giving the photographer. Well, we're talking to Simone Biles about the Olympics and about mental health and about how she's, aside from being one of, if not the best gymnasts ever, she's also become an advocate for mental health. And so many people looked up to her for those brave decisions she made, but she doesn't want to pigeonhole herself in either of those things. And who is she next? And she's getting married. What is she doing now? So all those things are up for discussion. Mm -hmm. What comes out is the strongest quotes or what she says that's the most salient part of an hour long interview, we won't know while we're taking the pictures. That makes a lot of sense. Um, And I'm seeing some follow up questions um, (laughs) and comments. And so I guess I'll ask this one about just the, how it all works for the photographers. Do the photographers keep the rights to their photos? Um, The contracts, 
are different for different brand, like not di for different companies, like the people contract, which we are now owned by dot dash Meredith, it changes every day, is <laughs> we're still using the Meredith contract, which was the timing contract is different than if you're shooting for Rolling Stone, which is part of Penske Media Group, and their contract is different than if you're shooting for Hearst or shooting for the New York Times. So all the contracts are unique and I have my opinions on them, but it's purely an opinion. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the people, big P, people contract is the photographers do retain the rights to the photos. However, people can reuse people, capital P, can reuse our commission photography for no additional cost for people branded things. So if we do the shoot with Simone Biles, I'll just keep using the same examples. And then six months later, we're doing a one page story with Simone Biles about something. We can use one of those photos. If I need to get it retouched, I will pay to get it retouched if I don't have a retouch file already, but I'm not paying a licensing fee. However, after the 90 day embargo, Felicia can license those photos to whoever else she wants, doesn't have to tell me about it. All the money that she licenses it for, it, however much she wants goes to her. I don't really care. That makes sense. Where I know other brands, I'm not sure exactly how the New York Times works, but I know that we let, we pick up New York Times photography through Redux all the time. So I think there must be some sort of kickback. I know we're not allowed, people is not allowed to license our commission photos to any third parties. If someone comes to me and says, hey, I'd love to use your Simone Biles photo. I say, oh, Felicia's the photographer, go reach out to her. Mm -hmm. I believe the Rolling Stone contract, there is, they do are allowed to do some sort of syndication, but I'm not, I haven't read it personally. So that's just gossip. Okay, no, I appreciate it. You're just but like- Copyright for mm -hmm. a people magazine contract, print, digital, whatever. Copyright stays with the photographer, 90 day embargo from issue date. People can reuse our commission photos for people branded things. Got you. Thank you so much for, I mean, like, again, and Rich, I had no idea how this works. So I love just having the context. So thank you for that. Um, I want to go back to this because, you know, when you were as photographers, you know, in this setting, you may just be wanting to take the beautiful photo, right? But when you're saying with print and you have to think about the text, the different things that may go on top, like how like how do you then just decide, like, I guess, which photos would work? Are you laying it out together or does somebody else do all this? And then, you know, this is the one for so the cover. What happens is if it's my shoot, I do an edit of what I've received from the photographer. And I say, these are ones I think work for cover. These are the ones I think work for feature. And then I show it to my creative director. She might edit it further from there, or she might say, I agree with you, or she might say, do you have one that looks like X or Y? I feel like this is missing. And then once we've done that, then we have a meeting with the writers and the editors on that particular story and do it kind of as a team. And then we show it to our editor in chief. We don't just show one cover, we show like six covers or four covers, you know, and everyone kind of gives their two cents. And a lot of times it gets pretty heated. <laughs> imagine uh, okay so that is so fascinating so with this like you may have laid out you're saying six different options we actually have two covers for this week because of this like the one that you'll see if you go to the newsstand she's wearing a blue dress and this is the one that subscribers get um we loved this rebel we knew from on set really felt really special in this outfit mm -hmm. but we didn't have a good smiling frame and we know on newsstand smiling really sells. Mm -hmm. So we did a blue dress for the newsstand and a green dress for subscribers and for promo. We are unique in that we still have to sell on newsstand. A lot of magazines or a lot of publications, that's not a metric anymore, you know? So they don't have to worry about selling 200,000 copies a week. So they can do in a photo that's more artful, maybe that where there isn't eye contact or where there isn't a big smile, but we need people to spend $6 every week when they're at the grocery store. <laughs> yeah, I, I never thought about it like that. And so when you're getting like an exclusive, 
within you have more time with the photographer I see like there's so you're saying there's three different outfit changes at least here right so she did three outfits we don't do a ton of outfits as a brand because we're not a fashion magazine mm -hmm. so our max is normally three we most of the time do two just and also the amount of time it takes to change and prep we'd rather do more photos and spend less time on outfit changes okay and then when thinking about just like photographers for projects you have a say in are most of the time, are they with an agency? If it's somebody that you're working with the first time, like how does that work when you're deciding like to actually hire the photographer? With an agency, I would say they don't have to be with an agency. Um, a lot of people we work with aren't with an agency. If you're with an agency, sometimes it's easier to find you just because if I'm going to that agency to like spark inspiration or look in general, oh, I have this shoot coming up. Who would be good for this shoot? Well, let me go look at this agency. And then I might see a new name. Like that's how we found the Tyler twins. Mm -hmm. They shot Queen Latifah for us. Um, they're, they're adorable. Amazing. I, <laughs> I'm such a fan of their work. Um, but I did not know of their work and they're with Bernstein Andreuli and I was on the Bernstein Andreuli site and I saw their work, which I would not have known otherwise. The other way I find people a lot, and this is not across the board. I don't take my opinion for other people's opinions because I did a whole speech on this pre-pandemic with like Flo and Landon Norderman, but like I'm very into using Instagram as a tool. So I see something that's shot for the New York Times or for Town and Country or for whoever. I follow all these accounts and then I'm like, that's a pretty photo and the photographers, you know, credited. I click on that person, I follow them. And then that's how I remember them for future if they're posting a lot. If you're not posting a lot, I'm like, oh crap, there was someone I followed. I don't remember who their name was. Let me try to find them again. And then I can't. <laughs> or I'll see something where someone says, oh, how about this person? And I say, oh, let me check their Instagram. And I'm already following them. And I didn't even realize I was because they're not posting their work a lot or it's not showing up in my algorithm because of the meta mm -hmm. crap. But mm -hmm. I feel like getting your work out there and showing who you are and who you want to present yourself as, as a photographer is really important and posting it. This is something I've learned. So this is probably something you all know, but I don't know. But like you post something on your Instagram feed, also put it in your stories. I thought that was overkill, but I was told by multiple younger people that it's not. And that's what you need to do because so many people are just clicking through stories that they won't see it if it's in your feed. Right, right. That is, that is such a good point, especially. It's I something that was told so to me by a younger now. person. <laughs> yeah, such a good point. And so I guess then, you know, how often, because maybe the photographer doesn't have any new work like, you know what it doesn't have to be new okay. work and it doesn't have to be published work because okay. once I followed you from something I just need you to pop back into the front of my brain and by seeing your name all the time mm -hmm. and by seeing your work all the time it could be personal work it could be an outtake from a shoot you did a while back it could be anything that you think represents you and who you mm -hmm. want to present yourself to be like I would like to present myself as an amazing portrait photographer who works really well on location and let me show that or I would like to be a very cool still life photographer with graphic compositions show that mm -hmm. I hope y'all are, are taking notes <laughs> uh okay so the photographer has never worked with you know, a magazine or a publication, what type of, you know, because you just mentioned different things that you want to see. Um, but I guess it's just like, how else can they stand out? Um, how do you know that they would be ready for a cover? For I, I mean, honestly, and this is harsh, I can't take that kind of risk. Mm. It's not something I could do with this brand. Mm -hmm. It's something that a cooler brand could definitely do, like a mm -hmm. Bustle or a Refinery29, you know? Mm -hmm. But this is the people I'm dealing with 
small p, mm -hmm. <laughs> on, on the talent end or on the rep end is just not, that's not a risk I can take. Mm -hmm. We hire photographers that are new to our brand all the time that are up and comers. But if I'm hiring you for a celebrity shoot, it won't be your first celebrity shoot. Got it. If I'm hiring you for a human interest story, we do a lot of human interest stories all over the country, like all over the country, mm -hmm. wherever you are, we have definitely shot there. It, you maybe work for, a, you've done work for a local newspaper or for the Washington Post, which does a lot of similar type things or through Redux, which is a great agency for this type of work, or mm -hmm. you've shot on spec and it's been published in those places. Like, I just need to have something to pin it to that I say, this has been done because especially if it's a human interest story or even a smaller celebrity story, and it's not something that one of my team can attend, you are the like sole representative of the brand on set. So I just need to be super confident that everything is gonna go swimmingly and we and that the talent, be it a real life people who maybe have had something horrible happen or are going through something horrible, or celebrities doing fun stuff have the best experience they can have and say they were very professional, they were very fast, they were very X or Y or whatever, because otherwise it comes back on the brand. Mm -hmm. So it's like these smaller places are the way to start and always assisting, assisting, assisting. Like I work with so many people who I used to work with when they were assistants for other photographers. And do you think that, you know, would it be easier, for example, if somebody's goal here was to work, you know, for people, work with people at one point, would it be easier to then try to get in through the digital route? Or I think it's the same because the same, mm -hmm. we're working with the same talent and we're mm -hmm. working under the same umbrella of a brand. I think you know, it really, it's very unique to what type of photography you want to do. Like we do mm -hmm. a lot of say photo studios, just say like the Tyler twins shoot a lot of them, um, but we don't hire them that much. We do deals with Getty. So like Getty or Shutterstock or one of the agencies hires them. And then like it has our branding on it. It's like a whole back end thing, mm -hmm. but those agencies are a good foot in the door for that type of portraiture. And then that gets you in to show, look, I've done all this work with all these celebrities or those shoots, those photo studio shoots at like an award show, you have like maybe 90 seconds with the talent, like maybe. Mm -hmm. They're just coming in and coming in and coming in. So that builds your portfolio and gets your name kind of everywhere, it's just seen. Or if you're doing, and maybe so you would reach out to Getty or Shutterstock or Redux and say, can I submit? Can I be on your roster? Can I do a, get a credential to do a small red carpet? Mm -hmm. And it's all, and that, that's very specific to celebrity that doesn't make sense for like real people stories, but it's an example. No, but I think it's really focusing what your goal is. And I use celebrity as examples because I would say that's like 60% of what we shoot where the other 40% is these human interest stories or occasionally, well, I would say people who escape serial killers. <laughs> um, <laughs> A lot of them. <laughs> So that is so funny. Um, so you mentioned that, you know, okay, so if you don't already have photographers in mind, and one way you find photographers is through Instagram. Are you searching different hashtags? I don't search hashtags, but like I said, this is so personal to me. Mm -hmm. And like I am exactly. not 20 or even 30, you know, like I don't know. I'm not on TikTok. I downloaded it, but I don't know. <laughs> I'm not on TikTok it. either. <laughs> <laughs> but I know other, so I don't I feel awkward saying these things because I know when I listened to some of the other the one with the Red Bull people they mm -hmm. were saying well like oh they love promo emails like I don't I just delete promo emails mm. but but 
don't not send them because obviously the Red Bull people do open them. Mm -hmm. So everyone is so different that you can't make it so narrow because maybe the, right. the people from the other spot speech would say, oh, I don't use Instagram at all. Mm -hmm. And I already get 2000 emails a day. So like anything that's not a fire that needs to be put out, I'm like, delete, 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 delete. Mm -hmm. And I also feel personally, once again, personally, that in the email promos like have to be better than the Instagrams. Because when I do read them, they sound like form letters. And I'm like, this is awkward. Like I work for the biggest, one of the biggest brands in the country. You don't have to read it. You don't have to be a fan, but if you don't know what it is and they say like, I shoot beauty and fashion. I'm like, okay, that has nothing to do with me. Like, <laughs> so then, you know, if... or to Instagram, you're just putting it out there for the world. You're not presenting it to me. True, true. So for you personally, you, d you would prefer just to see people's Instagrams. You don't want to necessarily see pitches. We, we as a brand don't do pitches really. Like we find it to be, it's just not the way we work. And, but I do know it's the way a lot of other brands work, but our pitches all come from the editorial side. Okay. So like I said, this thing with the woman from Jeopardy, they pitch something to me and it's something that sounds really, really interesting. Mm -hmm. but I so far haven't been able to get the editors to sign on. Like there's like a level of like, no, that's our thing as we bring the stories to you. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, so it's just not how we work, but it is how a lot of other brands work. Um, no, that makes sense. There's a question from the chat. And I think this is a good follow up um, from Mimi earlier asking when looking to land a commercial editorial work, should photographers aim to reach out to, who should photographers aim to reach out to? So for example, if it's not reaching out to you then, should they reach out to creative directors, art directors, like who are good people they can reach out to? I to think it depends work? on who the brand has, like teams are getting smaller and smaller. So if there's a photo editor, reach out to a photo editor. With advertising agencies, they're normally called art buyers. Mm -hmm. I don't know why. If there's a creative director or an art director, definitely. And then, I would also say, once you start looking, like, look at what you like, look at who you want to be. So I really love, let's just say, for example, like Felicia, right? I'm just going to keep using mm -hmm. people I'm friends with. So I really like Felicia's work. Let me follow Felicia. Oh, look, she shot this thing for X brand. Let me follow that brand. Like, oh, and then... So maybe I should reach out to that brand because their style and they like her work is similar to what I would like to be shooting. Even if it's not the same aesthetic, I like those type of stories. I would like to be shooting those type of stories. Kind of like glom onto someone who's kind of like a mentor who you don't know is being your mentor and like just kind of see what they're doing, see where they're posting, see what they're using like we use a lot sometimes outside producers just for logistical reasons and bandwidth reasons you know those production companies often hire photographers or put together the whole shoot so those are good people to follow they're often people who used to have my job who got laid off and start their own production companies i two of my very good friends who i used to work at in style with have had a production company for five years and they're always hiring photographers to shoot a lot of advertising like a lot of huge range of work mm -hmm. and there's better money in advertising <laughs> notice but notice. your credit's not out there so they no one sees your name mm -hmm. um like if you shoot an ad for t-mobile no one will know you shot it and that's that's a good point because then how do they how do you, people find you then exactly oh man um okay so but say if you saw like just as like a rabbit hole example like mm -hmm. if you saw felicia's post on simone biles and you said oh that was for people and then you click on people and see my posts not my personal post my one from the photo department instagram which i run Mm -hmm. very poorly and you'd see oh smith and union were the producers on that let me click on smith and union oh they do all these big ad campaigns they do these other editorial brands let me maybe i should send my work to them at some point 
That, that's true. That's true. That would be a good way to get in the door in that sense then. And with people who deal with a lot of brands, like if you're dealing mm-hmm. with me, you're just dealing with people. And like, I will say, I talk to my friends all the time. They would reach out and say, you know, like, oh, I have a home shoot in Atlanta. Do you have someone who shoots homes in Atlanta? Like, and I'm like, oh, I think I used someone once. Let me see if I can find the name. Like, mm-hmm. so we talk to each other, but it's almost like, it's almost better to cast a wide net mm-hmm. um so you mentioned instagram being one way that you find photographers when you're looking at the talk first website you know what stands out to you what are some do's and do nots for just an overall body of portfolio on a website for you personally so i think first of all you should say who you are you should say where you are you know if I, my budget is my budget. So if I'm looking for a photographer in Atlanta, I would like to find someone who I know is in Atlanta. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I don't want someone who's like student to the world. And then I don't know where you are. I don't have time to be like, are you in Atlanta? I think you might be near Atlanta. <laughs> and I understand that you can travel, but I don't always have the budget for that. And I don't like people traveling on their own dime because I find that to be Mm -hmm. unnecessary. Like, that's just a personal thing. I know other people are like, oh, I think they'll do it as a local. And I I just, I get a bad feeling about it. I prefer to, if I have the budget to travel someone, I will open myself up to that. If I don't, I don't. Just because editorial money is so low to begin with. So who you are, where you are, and then who you show who you are visually as a photographer. Just keep it focused. Like, don't do like beauty, fashion, still life, this, that, like, that's too much. Mm-hmm. You can't be everything. And if you want to have do personal projects or commissions, like that's totally fine. I mean, I think that's great. I look through everything. I don't like looking through, and this is just me, like when it's divided by stories, like a lot of times people who shoot for the New York Times a lot do it, like they don't do like portfolio, they do like this story, this story, this story, this story, and I'm like, that's too much to click. (laughs) (laughs) And like, if this one doesn't work, I don't know what all these different titles are, but it's nice to get a sense from a homepage of who you are, where you are, link it to your Instagram, little bio, if there's something that really interests you a type of story you like working on I met with these women at a portfolio review who were lovely they were out of out of Long Island Rhode Island and they were like we really focus on LGBTQ photography and amplifying those stories and I'm like that's great to know like Mm -hmm. great I appreciate that and I think the work is lovely and if I have a story that lines up with those things I will remember that Mm-hmm. There's a follow-up in the in the chat about style. Um, does it make sense to lean your style closer to your preferred publication styles, or just hone on your own distinct style and hope for the best? Hone on your own distinct style. Be you. Um, if you're if you're going for the publication, mm-hmm. if it's successful, fantastic. But then so many people will see that, and then that will end up being your style. Like, will that make you happy? <laughs> Mm-hmm. That is so a good point. Um well, thing great. I mean, I don't know. <laughs> There's another question. Have you ever experienced a time um when you hired a photographer and the photos did not turn out how you liked and you had to order a reshoot or you just can't afford that to happen? I we've reshot a couple of times over 12 years here. So Mm -hmm. never really with celebrities, but we've definitely had times where it doesn't turn out the way we like and we have creative workarounds or we make it work. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it can happen for a variety of reasons. Sometimes it's because of the talent and you think they had a buy-in. Like I don't like surprises. So I want everything to be up front Mm -hmm. like we are going to do outside you know whatever it is so there's no problem on set 
Mm -hmm. but sometimes it doesn't get translated or sometimes they change their mind about what they've agreed to, or you never know, or it's just not working. And it's happened a couple of times and Mm -hmm. we've reshot a couple of times, never was a celebrity, but it's not, it's not a major worry of mine. I think if you're working with a brand and if the brand person cannot be there, which is often the case where we work just because we do so many shoots and I can't fly people like Mm -hmm. everywhere. We do over 200 shoots a year that if something's not working and you feel like you've done the best you can with a certain setup, then try something else. Mm -hmm. Don't keep, if you have 20 minutes, don't shoot the same setup for 20 minutes. If you're like, this is, I've exhausted this So let's try this instead. Let's go over here. Let's, you know, this is a pretty bench. This is a. From that, I still have 10 minutes left. Don't just keep doing this for 500 more frames. Right, right. Um, There's a few more. I think I have like three more questions um, before our time ends. What, you know, differentiates the photographers who are invited to shoot time and time again versus ones that only uh, shoot once or twice for you? Um, I think it's the photos themselves. And I think it's the personalities. I think there's people that we just gel with in terms of both their visuals and their ability to roll with the punches or work within our budget or you know, we are not an easy brand to work for. Some people love it, but in terms of we have very tight turnarounds and very tight deadlines and very limited time with talent and all those things are harder on some people than they are on others. And that's totally understandable. Some people really would like to spend a day with a talent. Like we just don't have that luxury. I don't know what brands do anymore, but I'm sure there must be some. Mm -hmm. And, you know, being collaborative, some photographers are kind of like, oh, it's my idea or the highway, which for us would work for some shoots, but not others. Like, and do we think this person, knowing what we know about the talent, do we think they'll get along with the talent? Do we think it'll all work out to make everyone happy in the end. Mm-hmm. And you, um, you mentioned, you know, for example, Rebel and her rep and do, I'm sure you said, you know, like Rebel approved. So the rep, does the rep also need to approve like on that side or who has final say with the photos? So that's the way our people works as a brand, mm-hmm. all brands are different, but they don't get to approve the photos. They can see the photos on set. Mm -hmm. And we always like to say, we like to make people happy. We don't want them to like, I wouldn't want to see a bad picture of myself in the magazine. I had to do headshots yesterday and I am not happy with them and I am redoing them and I have retouching notes. Um, (laughs) Really not. (laughs) So if they're looking at the monitor and they're like, I hate that photo, we'll mark that and we will 99.9% of the time not use it but we're not sending like this is the cover we're thinking of using this Mm -hmm. is this no they've left the shoot and they see it the night before it comes out got it um another question you mentioned you know the rates for editorial are lower are you able to get a ballpark on what the rates are for people for people Mm -hmm. are I cannot speak for other brands but right. for people, our rate, our day rate is $650. Mm-hmm. And if it ends up being a cover, which sometimes something we shoot for cover ends up not being a cover. So maybe we shoot something not for a cover that ends up being a cover that is unique to people. Most magazines are not like that because they're not news-based, but we have a cover bonus of $1,000. And then we have expenses, like if you have an assistant or equipment or any of that kind of stuff, retouching, digital, but Mm -hmm. the rate itself is $650. I believe real simple is like a thousand, but then we have a cover bonus. I don't know, but that's a general. Right, right. And thank you. This is just for people, y'all. Like she said. That's for people. Everything. I think the New York Times is like 400. So yeah, yeah, yeah. The New York Times is about that. I remember that. Uh, 
<laughs> when uh, you say I'm trying to catch up in this chat and I don't know oh, you're totally not. fine you were totally so fine. does the photographer take care of the editing do you mean retouching or do you mean selecting Jesse I don't know if you want to retouching oh okay so that is kind of a case-to-case -case basis. Um, when we work with celebrity photographers, they often do their own retouching or have outside retouchers they work with exclusively and we follow their lead. A lot of times if it's news or human interest stories, we do little to no retouching. We can do cleanup in-house. I have a great team in-house that is fantastic. They're so good. They just can't do everything just volume wise. Mm -hmm. um, but if we're shooting like with, Felicia, I'm just going to use the same friends over and over. Her retoucher will do it for us. Mm -hmm. And then the last question for you. Um, I told you this hour goes by so quick. <laughs> um, what are some hard truths about the industry and just any other lasting advice you may have for us? It's not an easy industry. Like it's, it's rough. <laughs> <laughs> Was it the best idea I ever had? No. <laughs> you have to love it. I mean, you know, you have to love it. You have to hustle and you have to really form these relationships. Like I will say in terms of editorial, like I can't say it enough. Like the Leeton Meester example, that's like 15 years old at that point. Like that was a relationship or like Mrs. Obama, she exclusively shoots with Miller Mobley. Would I like someone else to photograph her? I would. Miller and I sometimes butt heads because he can be a pain in the ass. <laughs> no, he's lovely. But, you know, she's formed a relationship where she feels comfortable being photographed by this person and that's how it is. Or we have people who I know like, if we're in Florida, I understand Florida is a big state and I don't know it well, but there's a young photographer there named Octavio Jones. He's fantastic. Mm -hmm. We did a shoot with him. It was great. If I have a news and human interest shoot in Florida and it's in his area, I'll be like, let's get Octavio to do it. Cause I know he will deliver. I know he will do it. And I know it will be fantastic. So it's forming these relationships where you've succeeded at something and then that forms the relationship with the person who's the photo editor or the art buyer or with the production company like I was saying about my friends who do a bunch of different brands mm -hmm. they would say oh I have Minneapolis I need someone to do you know man on the street photos of people walking by like a New York style thing like they used to do on the street this person is perfect for that I've used them before and succeeded or the same thing with the talent like Mm -hmm. or with the rep for the talent like the talent PR machine is a thing and if they're comfortable with someone for one talent they will want it for their other talent too because they know it's a relation they they know what that person will deliver that makes so much sense Thanks. but it's not about like having the relationship like from the get-go oh we went to high school together or something like it's mm -hmm. not that it's about like that initial like I didn't know Octavio from anywhere i think mm -hmm. we saw something he shot for the washington post and we had something that came up in his area and we're like oh this is the same type of thing let's do it and then it was great mm -hmm. and the same thing in texas we use maria day to jesus a lot i've never met her but we it was she photographed george floyd's sister for us and it was fantastic and then she shot five or six other stories since then for us all in that area mm -hmm. No, that makes so much sense. Relationships are everything. I mean, relationships are everything. Thank you. Thank you so much for just like such great practical and just keeping it real. I really appreciate that. And again, <laughs> this is all tailored to people and for you. Um, Specifically people like don't. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So thank you all so much. You know, you can reach out to me on Instagram or um the photo one is at people mag photo. Very few people follow it, but I'm trying. I'm going to follow it right now. I'm so sorry. I post, <laughs> I post every shoot we do with the world's most boring captions because I'm afraid of saying the wrong thing <laughs> and having the editors yell at me. So it's like one sentence, if that, but I list all the credits every week. <laughs> See, that's so great because I was following just the actual people. So there's right, people and that can be anything. That's like a cute dog video. This at people mag <laughs> photo is just our photo shoots posted every week. <laughs>
gonna do that right now. And I'm gonna look a lot of times on like a Sunday night because I don't have a lot of time. <laughs> thank you, thank you so much again. Thank you, everyone. I appreciate it. I hope that was helpful. Thank you. Bye, everyone.